talk the build-up to the election, which is well and truly underway. One of the things that the parties have to get their uh, ducks in a row on, uh, basically, are those pre-selections. How's that unfolding, Andrew? Well, some interesting developments I'm chasing here, Kieran. So when we look at a tight federal election next year, where the public are perhaps a little unconvinced about the leaders of both major parties, candidates in individual marginal seats matter. The Liberals are moving heaven and earth to try to find a good candidate in the traditional bellwether seat of Eden Monero in southern New South Wales. I understand... They have two high-profile local candidates in mind or people who've hailed from that area, a man and a woman. The woman, I understand, to be a high-profile media personality. I'm actually wondering if it could be the likes of Erin Mullen, but I'm continuing to chase that, Kieran. I do know the Liberal Party is attempt he's talking to a media personality who hails from Eden Monero to attempt to recruit them to run in the seat. Anyway, that's developing with us. Fiona Cotvoice, who you saw there, the candidate who's run twice for the seat unsuccessfully, including at last year's by-election, is now looking odds-on to run for the state seat of Bega instead at next year's New South Wales by-election. The margin in the federal seat of Eden Monero is just 0.39%. 368 votes change hands, and it is the Liberals. This is who the Liberals were after previously. Nicole Overall, journalist and wife of the Mayor of Quembian, who John Barillaro, the former New South Wales Premier, Deputy Premier, stole off the Liberals and got to run for the Nationals for the state seat of Monero in next year's by-election to replace him. As I said, candidates matter in a tight election, this is why someone like Bega, former Bega Mayor and Labor MP Christy McBain matters in Eden Monero just as Warren Inch matters in Leichhardt. And you can see why when you see these latest news poll results because there is no polarising leadership performance at the moment to sweep seat wins. A lot can really be put down to the phrase it's not a race and the limo driver Bondi outbreak which shut down half of Australia in terms of why these numbers have been changed. So... Likeability rating, Scott Morrison had 63% in April. It's 47 now. Albanese, 52 to 50. Trustworthy, Morrison, 57 to 42. Albanese, 45 down to 44, so much the same. In touch, again, Morrison way down, 54 to 41. Albanese, 47 to 46. In the space of just six months, understand some major issues. Morrison, 65 back to 52. Cares for people, 63 back to 50. Arrogant. 52 up to 60. But many in government still believe Morrison can win, even if the political landscape has changed massively in six months. You don't have to like someone to vote for them. In terms of other pre-selections, with the New South Wales ones being held back by the Liberal Party in the hope of star candidates, there is still what I would describe as a fantasy within some sections of the Liberal Party about Gladys Berejiklian running against Zali Stegall in Warringah. But I can't see that happening, not with an ICAC decision on Berejikli and still hanging over her head. Former New South Wales Transport Minister and former New South Wales Treasurer Andrew Constance is a shoo-in to run for the South Coast Labor seat of Gilmore in New South Wales, even if it has to be marshalled through the party's state executive because Constance does not have the local numbers. There has even been talk of getting Paul L, who wants to take on Andrew Constance in Gilmore to run for Eden Monero, but I hear that is unlikely. Constance and Scott Morrison are said to have made their peace since the Black Summer bushfires, but some Liberals are concerned Constance could end up attacking the government, as he did during the bushfires. 